Sustasia Bliss, Bliss in the House. Today, the show, Speaking It Into the Field. As we take a few deep breaths, just become aware of the voice, of the throat. And as we listen for a few moments to Michael Mandrell and Benji play the mystery, just become aware of the inside of your throat, the vocal cords, the tongue, the mouth, the jaw. All those parts of you that help you to speak, to vocalize. We're in a powerful, powerful time. Our voices are becoming fully activated in their potentiality. We are becoming fuller versions of our creator selves. It is no longer okay I think we lost some time here. I'm not really sure how much. But I was asking you to speak into the field something you would like to see, like peace. And then feel how that feels when you say it in the field immediately around you. Say not. And just tune in. And then, just for kicks, uh, you can say something in the field now that maybe you aren't interested in experiencing, you know, just to, to see how it feels. You know, maybe you say something like, poverty and even just feel that clenching in your throat in your body when you say it there's a bit of a restriction so replace it with abundance with plenty and start to notice here in these moments that we're experiencing this awareness consciously together, the power of words. Because it isn't just the words themselves, but it's the consciousness that's behind the words. It's you, it's me. Speaking consciously something into the collective field, first into our own field, into our, you know, personal space into the bubble around us this is going to you know bounce back toward us and help to enhance or take away from this vehicle that we are embodying so being cautious that we are continuing to create resonance in the field that would uplift that would bring not only just healing 
but a level beyond that. Let's level up beyond just healing and go into activating our potential. Now this seems like a very important subject, especially this week in particular as we're leading up to the spring equinox and a solar eclipse. There is this great amping up in the collective right now and it is asking each one of us to be very conscientious what we speak into the field right now that what we speak has great potential of actually coming into existence so consider that for a moment consider that we have entered a sort of portal if you will and what that might mean if we really take it seriously that if we're being invited right now to bring into the field with our languaging that which we would like to see so this is interesting this comment came up on my Facebook feed today from somebody that I um, I very much respect and I'm going to read one of his poems later but it brings this to mind as I'm speaking of this uh, this is uh, Jack Weber and I hope he doesn't mind me quoting this but he says on his Facebook page today one major shift in consciousness needed is from this new pseudo spirituality of the life we want manifesting our dreams and attracting what we want being free to one simple thing working on behalf of others and the non-human world to restore balance which includes fighting off the parasites and plunderers this is how we create a world in which we can all have more of what we truly want including real freedom so my interpretation of that is that many of us are focused on manifesting you know my dreams this sort of self-absorbed obsession with creating a reality in alignment with our hearts I mean we really do want to create a specific reality each one of us do and as we're empowered with this idea of law of attraction and manifestation and all this stuff and I you know I've spoken to this before about you know when we're creating with just us in mind our own person that it is sort of in a way kind of like a black magic because we are it's kind of for selfish purposes and so I think Jack is touching on this and I want to expand a little bit further that instead when we create or have the intention of the whole in mind you know of the oneness in mind then we begin to see one another as the larger self and that's including plants and animals and the minerals and the earth body herself as us and that by doing this what is healing and inclusive of all these aspects in the dream that we can really have what we want you know that the balance comes yeah sure in you know by looking within first by going to that place of harmony within but we must also counterbalance this by acting in our environment and by speaking into the environment those things that you know take into consideration the allness so I want to invite each one of you right now to consider you know not only speaking into the field those things which you would like to see would like to you know dream a better world for yourself but also considering that as the greater whole the oneness the all all of the world all of humanity not just the humans the plants the minerals the animals you know consider that they are all aspects of us that in a way that they're all embodying different you know qualities different aspects of the wholeness if the wholeness is manifesting in all these different forms and we are part of that and you know the animal kingdom is part of that and the plant kingdom is part of that I truly believe that the only reason that manifestations of say you know that would would be male- malevolent or poisonous or um, you know injurious or destructive is because we haven't fully given them voice we haven't fully included them in the body of the one in your in our own minds in our own consciousness we have allowed these things to become separate 
And so this is something I've learned from some of my Almin studies, is that this idea of bringing back all into the body of the one, that when I can sense in myself what it feels like to soar like the eagle, to leap freely like the gazelle, to, you know, take in the sun like the creeping, you know, reptiles, when I can feel all those qualities inside of me, you know, the bursting out of the egg of the new chick and feeling the newness of that, Uh, you know, all of these things, when we can feel those within us, you know, in spring right now, the bursting forth of the new flowers, the, you know, budding of the new grasses coming out of the ground, this is also in us, this this newness emerging again after we've been deep within in the soils of ourselves in the winter time you know here in the northern hemisphere really going deep within so now as we come toward the equinox life is asking us to speak now as that you know shoot that's rising up out of the earth what is it that we are creating as a whole not just in my life stage of bliss not just in my singular egotistical expression, but what is the allness creating? What is the allness creating? And with that, I want to play a song from a dear soul sister, Amy Steinberg, and she speaks to this in this song, in um, her song called Power, from Getting Intimate with the In Infinite is the album. So listen to these words. I'm just going to play some of it here. going to pause it there and just consider this power inside is love so you know we've all heard it say love is all there is you know love will heal the world and many of us have sort of distorted versions or views of what this love really is but if we you know allow the love to be what it is without the you know constructs of the mind that we placed upon it and we allowed ourselves to really just feel what this love really is. The love, if, if everything is sprouting from the love, if the love, where does the love supposedly come from? The heart? Yes, and in, in us humans, the heart, but in, in the one, in the cosmos, in the greater reality, from the heart of it, from the center, from the source. From the source, there is a power that allows a seed to grow, that allows a human to grow, that allows any potentiality to sprout itself into existence, to manifest. So now, as we have this portal, this opening, this opportunity for speaking, activating that potentiality that is within each of us, as we open that portal to the source, to the love vibration, that vibration that feeds and nourishes us, nurtures us, allows us to grow. You know, we grow toward love. If someone's not showing love toward us, and instead they're showing the opposite, or, you know, they're pulling away that compassionate service, nurturing energy, we're not drawn toward that. We're drawn toward loving beings of kindness and compassion and service, seeing the good in us. You know, it's not that we are needy for those things, but it's a natural, it's a natural human tendency to move toward love. You know, we were given that, most of us as infants, 
our first experience in this world being held to the bosom, to the heart, feeling that loving arms of mother, but even before this, coming from the source, from where we all came from, is a loving vibration, an inclusive wholeness that embodies all that is. So anytime that is being expressed toward us, expressed from us, there's a tendency to move in the direction of, to fill a yes in the direction of. And the same is true of the cosmos outside of us. So when we are expressing love, when we are speaking a loving, growth enhancing, nurturing, respectful, peaceful, you know, idea, when we're speaking a heartfelt desire that is full of love into the field. The field responds because it is like, this is where, you know, law of attraction stuff kind of resonates here because it's that likeness of that love, the universal energy says yes to that. Now, it's not saying if we speak other, you know, inharmonious things that those things don't come into being. They certainly can. And that comes back to the, the truth that we are creators that we are co-creators with life. And so let it be said in this time right now to be careful what it is that you're speaking into the field. That those things which you're speaking, you know, you can watch them come to be. You can watch them come to be. And this is happening more and more, I believe, as the vibration of the planet is increasing. The frequency is changing. Now, not everyone is going there, okay? A lot of people are really stuck and circling in a lower vibration. And this is no judgment on that. There is, you know, really two worlds starting to happen. And I'm not really looking at this as a separation, though it seems to be true. But it's in the same way that that yin and yang has to keep, you know, turning, and flowing on itself, that there's going to be this expression in the unity, in the one of this higher frequency. And it has to be counterbalanced some way by the other, by the shadow, to really have balance in the cosmos. You know, and it's said that there's always this cycle happening from the light to the dark, the light to the dark, and you know, some have suggested and prophesied that that was ceasing, that in the oneness that was going to change somehow. And I'm not really sure how this is going to play out. There's a couple of different viewpoints. And one is that that yin-yang continually starts to turn. But in the oneness, we no longer judge it as being, you know, right and wrong, good and bad, black and white. But it's really just an expression of the one. So our perspective on it changes. Another way of possibly seeing this manifest might be that those sort of melt into one another, that the cycles, so to speak, actually just become an infinite, eternal, now moment existence where at any moment you could turn your attention to any one thing and see either, you know, the light or the dark, either the black or the white, the, you know, big or the small, that everything is coexisting at the same time within itself. So wherever we put our focus or attention on, that thing grows, that thing gets bigger. So this is again where we come back to our speech and what we're focusing on, what we're speaking, what we're continuing to put in the field. So recently I I made a post on um, my Facebook page and some of you copied it and reposted it of, you know, let's just post those things that we would like to see, you know, instead of, you know, doing like a repetition of those things that we don't want. I'm trying to find the the post so I can read it exactly, but it's basically, you know, like we have these tools of social media. We have these outlets for us to, um, yeah, promote what you love instead of bashing what you hate. It's that simple. So we have these tools of social media, you know, we can use them to speak into the field, you know, with our typing, with a video, with this audio recording, 
and perpetuate more of whatever it is we're speaking. And that is, quote, positive or negative. So we can create more of what we want. We can also perpetuate fear. We can also share things that are, you know, not what we want. It, you know, and we're, we're saying we want to educate. And, you know, I'm at fault also sometimes for doing that. And I, you know, to the side of awareness. And it's like, okay, well, you know, there's a couple of issues that I'm not really going to go into right this very moment. But, okay, just to sort of skim the surface, I could say, like, the vaccine issue. And this is not a vaccine show. I'm not going to totally go into that. But I do want to say that by posting things that are uh, awareness around this issue, you know, for myself personally, it's in hopes of enlightening the subject not having a you know debate about it per se, but enlightening the sides that maybe aren't in the light. Because for me, it's let's create more of a world and a kingdom and a earth space where we are aware enough to make conscious choices about what it is that we want to continue to see. For me, in my choice, in my world, I would like to continue to see choice. I would like to continue to see freedom. I would like to continue to see that my body is up to me for what I want to do with it. And the same with my children's bodies. What would be done with them would be, you know, up to me as the mother, not some organization, not the rest of the populace. And I do that not out of fear of what might be put into me or them, as much as I do just simply out of choice, simply out of the belief and knowing that what I speak into my field, into my children's field, that we are self-sovereign, that we have the ability right now to tap into source energy, that love field vibration, and emanate and vibrate at the frequency of it, and that we don't, you know, to me, a vaccination, you're putting it in you because you're afraid you're going to get this terrible thing okay to me that's the fear that's the fear vibration so you know again I don't want to debate about this right now I want to just touch on that by saying you know I truly believe that we each have the power within us to embody to emanate to express in our bodies and in our fields and in our world that divine source energy and we do that by not only saying yeah, I agree with that. But it's starting to embody that in our words, in our speech, in our sharings, in our languaging, how we say things to one another. Do we speak to that knowing or do we speak to a limited version of ourselves that we've been trained and conditioned to perpetuate? You know, do we respond or react to people's posts on social media, to articles, to conversations with people in real time? Do we have to argue it or do we just know and embody it? I feel like there is stages to this knowing. And perhaps I'm speaking to those of you who, you know, maybe already know and who are ready to jump to the next level. But perhaps there are you know, all different levels of listeners. You know, I'm going to read a poem right now by uh, Jack Adam Weber. It's called, And the Soul Spoke. And this kind of speaks a little bit to what I'm saying. And I'll tie it in, but it goes like this. Never injured to begin with. I have no interest in being healed just had to be cracked open in this way, beautifully painful way. Not getting over things allows them to move us into broader spaces, leaving just a trace through the wings they opened. I'm going to read it again. Never injured to begin with. I have no interest in being healed just had to be cracked open in this way, beautifully painful way. Not getting over things allows them to move us into broader spaces, leaving just a trace through the wings they opened. You 
You know, this is a, a beautiful speaking of the soul to me. Because truly, I believe that we are not injured. To begin with, we come from source. We come from wholeness. And it is this illusion, you know, that we chose, that we created to have this experience of being injured. And I'm not to say, you know, I'm not saying that the experience of pain is not real because I know that it is. It feels very real. It feels very real to experience heartache, to experience, you know, physical injury and, you know, all kinds of suffering that are available for the opportunity on this earth to go through. But like the poem says, you know, not getting over them or really just allowing ourselves to go through them allows us to become bigger, to expand, to, you know, reach out into those places. We can say that that's not me. I feel it. And it's actually pushing me toward what I really am, what I truly am, where we actually have wings to hover above all those things and that we call in these, you know, beautifully painful things to kind of break us open. And so as we're moving through the transitions from, you know, those closed, more contracted states, you know, to start to remember and again, embody, bring in the power of speech. (laughs) My words are kind of falling all over themselves for a moment, but it's, You know, to find the right words now in knowing the potency of each word we say and to perhaps reflect that it is good to move from the speaking into the silence and from the silence back into the speaking as we collect our thoughts and our experiences as emotion and you know, place them again on the altar of the now moment to be taken in by the one and, and transformed into a manifest form. You know, so many of us in this movement of, you know, light workers and healers and, and so forth, you know, and I, I resonate with that to an extent more to the idea of empowerment and remembrance in the truth of who we are, the authentic God, goddess beings, manifestations of the one. You know, and there's an element of needing to be healed. You know, I've been doing this emotion code work and it's been a beautiful process of unpeeling all the falsities around the authentic self. That's really what they are. You know, a lot of these, quote, stuck emotions, they're just believed in falsities. You know, I believed in rejection long enough to hold that in my field and warp the identity of the truth of who I am, which is not this small ego self, Stasia. It's, you know... It's infinite and vast, just like you. But by peeling those away, so now the question comes and has been asked of me, and especially of late here. So after we peel these away, sister, after we let these, you know, trapped falsities go, then what? Do they come again? What goes in their place? You know, and of course... My answer originally is, well, they're peeling away to reveal what is already there. But so then, have we the tools to access what is there? Or does it naturally just start emanating? And I I believe the answer is both. You know, as you start to peel away the shell, the little chick pops out. Yes. Then there's an element of that chick learning maybe by observation of the other chicks around or the mother, you know, what it is to do. And then there's the natural instincts that come from within it. It knows how to be a chick. You know, but it has to also learn or remember to learn 
learn to remember. So I'm stumbling across this idea that at a point, we need to begin to activate more fully this power of speech to actually command you know, how many times do we command in our life? <laughs> but what if we command this earthen body vessel to step it up? You know, that we stop asking around, hey, can you help me step this up? You know, can you help me heal? And yeah, sure, we're here for each other to do that. Some of us have, you know, the insight, the eyes, the vision, the touch to be able to see. But eventually, eventually we have to take that on ourselves. We have to realize that we can do it for ourselves. That we look to ourselves and we say, I am ready. I now command the cells of my body to express in their highest potentiality. I command my body to release all that which is not serving me. And yeah, we might need to learn how to do it part by part eventually. You know, I'm starting to bring together this idea uh, and these this tool of how maybe to do this in a more specific way. Because, you know, in a way, even saying that seems kind of too general that maybe it's not potent enough to just say, I activate my highest potential because there might be a lot of blocks or false beliefs or things that are hiding that. And so as we remove them, okay, so maybe the question is, what is the next quality, the quality of oneness, the quality of my highest potentiality that is the highest priority to bring forth now, to find out what that is and to activate that and to do this um, stage by stage. So this is what I'm developing right now is the next phase of this emotion code thing. But I'll let you know how this goes. This is a work in progress and I believe this is the gift of this equinox and this eclipse this week to delve more deeply into this question. But my invitation to you in this broadcast is to really become attuned this week this day, this moment, into your speech. And I invite myself to attune to my own speech, into my writing, into my Facebook posts, or wherever I happen to post, into my phone calls and text messages, into my conversations with real people, to even take a moment to pause before speaking. And to recognize that in my exchange with this person, we are co-creating something. We are either creating a repetition of an old pattern and program that will then just continue now to be stronger, like the synapses in the brain when we just keep having the same thought. Okay, that pattern is there. It just keeps happening. It's really easy to have a habit because we've done it so many times. So, hello, how are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. You know, paper or plastic? you know, have a nice day, thanks you too, like these programmed things, they're just going to happen unless we consciously break them. And the connectivity in humankind is not going to strengthen by continuing to perpetuate these programs because they are lifeless. They are not embodied by any sort of life or spirit. They are like an old recording, like a sound bite, my friend has said. So it's just a repetition so to bring consciousness into the moment, what is to be said here? And it's the same when you go outside and you interact with nature. Now, maybe you're not going to be like, hello, tree, how are you? But maybe on a different level, you do. You soul commune with that tree. You breathe in, you know, in teaching Kundalini yoga for years, um, taking on this practice of breathing with nature breathing up my spine, out the top of my head, exhaling down through the tree body into the earth, inhaling again and reversing that breath, finding that we have this circuit already really happening between us and nature. There is this natural flow if we just tune into it that you actually don't have to do it. It's already happening. But we're so disconnected from it generally that we don't notice and we don't engage it. And when we engage it, we can actually find wisdom. 
find the strength that the tree holds, the vision that the tree holds and sees from that standing still position. And the same from the flowers as they are, you know, bursting forth, they have a message, they have a maybe momentary wisdom of the spontaneity of the freshness of life to gift us. That if we stand in awe of them to communicate with our energy, with our breath, that we can absorb, we can be taught, we can experience what it is they have to gift us. And that's true with everything, with crystals. They have a structure within them that holds information. They can give that to us when we are still with them. You know, with music, with animals. I mean, those of you who have pets, you know there is a, a wisdom in them, in their inability to speak our language, to communicate something deeper, something that is, you know, without drama, without certain attachments. But all animals have this, you know, and we have this, like, totem, you know, what do the animals represent? What is their message to us? And what do they embody? And we see an animal, maybe we look up the totem and, you know, read what they're about and try to take that message. But what if we just notice the animal and we just tune into them for a moment and we see them? We don't get the camera. We don't look up on the phone what they mean or anything. We just sit with them. We just attune to them. And we notice, even if we don't know cognitively, intellectually, why they showed up. Somewhere in us, we, we know why. We see the bird, and we know it's shown up at just that perfect moment. It's like it confirms something we already were kind of wrestling with and knew. That deer shows up at that moment, and we know the message. You know, maybe we have to ponder for a moment, meditate, bring it with us into our meditation, but, you know, we we have this great tool of, you know, Google online, and uh, not to put it down because I use it often, but like my dad brought to my attention recently, what a great metaphor. You know, we think in these phones, we're holding these little phones that they contain all information. You know, just like somebody might mistake in our brains as containing all the information that comes through us. But really, it's just like this beacon that takes in information from the allness. And so we can either Google it and get the information that someone else has got and recorded and, you know, put into the system. Or alternatively, we can tune in to that mass computer that of the oneness in our closed eye meditation access, you know, the data bank of the all, and get the personal revelation, the personal message that might be, you know, nothing like what is on Google, or it might be very similar, but it's yours. And so, you know, this is bringing that element of speech inward now, like to speak into that inner field, that inner resonance, and find out what the message is for you in that moment, that the scripture of today is what's being spoken through the now moment, right now, from you and to you. Right now we're writing the holy scriptures with our own language, because this moment is holy. And you are divine. And the prophets and prophetess as the visionaries are you and me, your neighbor, your sister, your brother, your children. And ooh, these are wild times. And I, I just say that because they are so full of potentiality. It feels like anything is possible. And truly, I believe it is. So as we step forth, into this knowing that really anything is possible. Anything is possible. So be careful what you speak into the field of possibility and potentiality and make it good. You know, not in opposition to bad, but good 
in resonance with yummy. You know, you're not going to throw a bunch of ingredients together that are really going to be disgusting. <laughs> you're going to consciously either use a recipe you're familiar with or you're going to use ingredients that you know go good together. They go harmoniously together. And not just for the benefit of yourself, but all those who will partake of the essence that you're creating with your languaging, with your energy. Breathe with me now. Again, sense your being. Your voice, your throat, your heart. You know, really your voice is coming right up from the belly, through the heart center and the high heart to express either in a constricted way, just squeezing through those programs and repeating sound bites. Or it's a it's authenticity in action manifest real time good stuff what if you just showed up right now on this earth and you had no reference point I mean maybe you got a quick download this is what's going on you know in the world let yourself have a fresh perspective Allow that newness to ignite the spark, the fire, the flame of your authentic truth, to spread it like wildfire into your communities and into the world. You are a gift in the moment of your arrival. Your words are precious. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to tune this Michael Mandrell, which you can find at michaelmandrell.com, his song, The Mystery. And we're going to end a little more upbeat back with Amy Steinberg and power it revealed when an open broken heart begins to be healed it breaks like the sky when the long dark nights are spinning on the wheel of the world Insist on bliss. I'm going to end the show today with that. This is Stasia Bliss. I insist on bliss. Thank you for joining me. You can find more at blissinthehouse.com. Also find me at marssocial.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be careful what you say. It just might manifest. Thank you so much. I love you. Peace and blessings.